Running total formulas seem like they should be easy to write, but if you do it the wrong way, they can introduce errors that might not be obvious. In this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to write a running total formula, including the correct way to write them for Excel tables, which requires a special technique. Let's start with a set of data that's not formatted in an Excel table. Now the easiest way is to reference the first cell and then reference that cell and add the next row. And then of course you can just double click to copy it down. But the problem with this approach is that you can't add or delete rows without breaking the formula. Of course, the easiest way to fix this is to copy the formula down again. But since we're all busy and if you're constantly adding to or changing your table, there's a more efficient and robust solution. So let's take a look. If we use the sum function and we're referencing this cell, and then I'm going to reference that cell again, we want to absolute reference just the first part of the reference, so the first cell, and then close parentheses. So at the moment, it's just summing one cell, but as we double click and copy it down, if you look in the formula bar, you can see it's now picked up the next row, the next row, and so on, so that it's always adding the current row to the range. And this way, if I add a row, it automatically updates correctly. And likewise, let's undo that and delete a row. You can see it doesn't cause any errors. Now, if your data is in an Excel table, you need a different technique. Let's take a look. Excel tables expect the formula to be the same in each cell for it to know to automatically copy it down. For example, if I use the sum formula that we used previously, now if I reference the cell there, I get the table structured reference. So let's just hard key in the cell range. So it's B4 to B4 and I want to absolute the first B4. It copies it down and it looks correct, but when I add a new row, just by pressing tab, notice this formula here has now updated and it's referencing the last cell in the table because Excel has thought, well, you've added a new row, this one summed to the last row of the table, so you must want it to still sum to the last row of the table and it updates it. This one, of course, also sums to the last row of the table. So you can see this style of formula in a table confuses Excel because it's expecting the formulas to be the same in each cell. The correct way to write a running total formula in a table is to use sum as well. But instead of referencing the cell directly, we need to use the structured references for the table. So we can use index to index the values column. And which row do we want returned? Well, we always want the first row. So that's always going to give us cell B4. Close index. And then the second cell reference is going to be the current row. So you can see there, we've used the table structured references in our sum formula. I'll press enter, it copies it down. Let's make that a bit wider. So you can see the formula is the same in every cell. Let's test it, we'll add a row and we'll put in a value. So you can see our running total is correct. Let's take a look at what's going on here. I'll just choose this one here and we'll go to the formulas tab and let's evaluate the formula and we'll step through it and see what it's doing. So we can see index is indexing the range B4 to B16 and we've told it that we want it to return row one. So that's B4. So you can see index is actually returning a reference to a cell rather than a value. And that's what we want here. Let's evaluate the second part. And you can see it's also returning a reference. So we indirectly pick up our cell references in order to get the running total. And that allows sum to return the value. Now, if you're familiar with index then you'll know that it can return a cell reference rather than just a value. And that's exactly what it does here, as you saw. So what we end up with is the cell range to sum, which adjusts based on the row the formula is on. Clever, huh? But more importantly, this formula won't return an error if we delete a row or add a row. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.